Hey guys, welcome to vlog video number five where I invited my handsome hubby, Mishu, Mike. Thank you. Hey guys. <laughs> uh, I invited him to join me on this one because he's a little better at explaining these things and he understands them better than I do. So, yeah. In English. <laughs> We'll be talking about the five things you should be prepared and aware of when visiting Dubai and planning on moving there. Might be actually more than five things. I think like six, seven. Whatever. Same, same. Yeah, let's just <laughs> get started. Bargain. That's the first one we're going to cover. Um, Mike says that you pretty much have to bargain absolutely everywhere you go. So take it away. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> uh, it's important thing to realize that Dubai is still Arabic world. So they love to bargain about everything. Uh, if you go to Diamond Silk, you're going to have to bargain. If you're looking for engagement ring in Dubai Mall in Tiffany and Co, you're still going to have to bargain. Tiffany they don't... and Co, can you believe that? Yeah. They don't show you real price, they show you some crazy price and then they will try to work you. And they are such a good salesman that in the end they make you feel like they did some uh, uh, yeah. some uh, favor for you. Some favor for you. Yeah. And so, you actually leave thinking you got like a sweet deal. Yeah. But then, then you start, come home and, and you, you start, start thinking with, and you're like, like crew and yeah. stuff and you're like, what? Yeah. And then you're like, shit, I got <laughs> yeah, so so pretty much everywhere the, the main brand things like Apple, Samsung, I guess uh, brand clothing as well, they will try to bargain. And that brings me to my last video when I mentioned like the customer service, how they can have a Starbucks in Dubai, but it doesn't mean it's gonna be the same service as you'd find in North America. It's like, it taints the name, the brand. Like, how could you get away with this at Starbucks? If I was working at the Starbucks here in Toronto, we would be trained in, with a different mentality, different mission, goal, you know? Mike has a really good example. Yeah, so I know I said that, uh... <laughs> let's say apple samsung store and all of that should be okay because like the price comes from the us right but they still find a way how to bargain or bargain 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 natalia. yeah so Na natalia was buying a new phone samsung and as a bonus uh, she was supposed to get headphones from samsung and they came with the completely different headphones. I believe it was JBL yeah. or something like that. Do, and they are yeah. like, mom, do you want this one instead of that? Like, it's more expensive, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, even in Samsung, they try to bargain. So that, That's kind of annoying. So I, I would suggest, like, every time you go somewhere, you intend to buy something, just make your research so you know what's the price, price supposed to be. Especially yeah. if you go for jewelry or stuff like this. So you don't end up thinking like, oh, or I overpaid. Yeah, very good point. Since we're on the Samsung topic, electronics would be our next point. <laughs> yeah, so it's important to realize that most of the electronics in Dubai is European version. And they, they don't tell you that. Like, when I wanted to find out about the Samsung phone we were buying for Natalia, I had to write to like three different uh, stores to find out is it the US version or European version. And uh, yeah, it, it took time to find out. And another important thing about electronics in Dubai is that, for example, Apple, uh, they have some some applications are disabled, so you're not able to FaceTime. If oh, you buy yeah. an Apple phone, I couldn't FaceTime when I was in Dubai. Right? I had to get that. Uh... 
VPN. VPN. Yeah. VPN yeah. So if you buy an Apple phone in Dubai, you don't have FaceTime. It's blocked. And even if you go to US, they won't unblock it because it's not the US version. So that's that's important thing to realize. Mm -hmm. True, true. Next thing we decided to cover will be apartments. If you want to rent apartment in Dubai, it's uh, very important. the whole contract thing. Uh, we heard some stories from the crew. Uh, it's really important to go through the contract because the landlord might try to... Like if something breaks down in the apartment, um, the first thing automatically the landlord will try and charge you for it and make it seem as though you had uh, damaged it. They really, really hold back from I calling- start making faces. What? I start making faces. Why? <laughs> I don't know! I was like, oh, I, I'm not smiling. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Michael started making faces. <laughs> but I'm, I'm gonna keep going. Where did I leave off though? Um, yeah, they'll do anything they can to avoid calling maintenance in and service to be done for this particular scenario and it will take a long while before somebody comes and I don't know it's just they try yeah that that's to why avoid paying for that stuff uh like everyone tells you that you should read the contract before you sign it right but in Dubai, you should be especially careful because it's not like, I would say, s civilized world. Or let's say Europe and <laughs> North America. It's not Europe and North America. It's not the same. Like, in Dubai, they will try to blame you if something breaks down. Oh, yeah. They will say, it's your responsibility to fix it. Like, in Europe, North America, in contract, you have that it's not your property. So if something breaks down... The landlord is supposed to deal with the whole maintenance thing. However, that's not how it works in Dubai, unless you have it in contract. So yeah, be, be really. <laughs> what? Be be really careful about that if it's written in the contract or if it's not. If it's not, they will charge you. They will let you deal with it. Yeah. Uh, also, my friends have many times faced their landlords paying them too much I mean charging them too much while the rest of the building is being charged a fraction of what he decided he wants them to pay him up front so or after the one-year contract because typically they are only a one-year contract um, he decides to jack up the price like crazy my friend currently right now during this COVID thing messaged me the other day saying that he wants her out but she can't move because of covid so she's staying but he wants to jack up the price and she's like no um actually we should negotiate it lower because she found out other people were being charged far less so it's like he can't come into her apartment because of social distancing and covid and right now it's like super strict that they can get fined and sent to jail if they go outside without a permit. It's that serious. They're actually sanitizing all the streets and buildings. Did you know that? There's like drones mm -hmm. every night. Oh, that's cool. Down. Yeah. It's really like, cool. I, I give them kudos for that. Give them props. Yeah. That's an upside. But anyway, um, but back to the topic. So, uh... You have a contract usually for one year. After one year, yeah, it happens that they will lower the price. It happens they will go higher the price. So you don't, you can't feel too secure staying in one apartment. Like it, it's not like everyone everywhere else that you can rent for ten years and consider it your home. No, in Dubai, after a year, you'll probably have to move. Yeah, everything is short term yeah. in Dubai. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> And even, like, they don't renovate the building, so in one year, you want to move. Because you find something better, for better price. Newer, even. Yeah. Just, there's new buildings every day. Yeah, so you don't really settle down in Dubai. Mm -mm. 
Next up, my favorite, the cabbie drivers. <laughs> I've gotten in so many fights with them. Oh lord. Yeah. That one time when I was like, karma, and he like kicked me out of his cab and like went from like zero to 200 miles yeah. per hour. I just. Yeah. It at the end no of our stay, we were just using Uber because it's it's just easier. It's more expensive, like everywhere else in the world, it's it cheaper, depends. but it's more expensive than the cabs. Yeah. No, it is more expensive than cabbies. But if the cabbie doesn't know the location, you end up paying more. Oh yeah, that's true. Good point. Yeah, so you'll ask them like, take me to Burj Khalifa, and. Or no, I'll be like, do you know where the Burj Khalifa is? And they'll be like, yeah, come in. So you go in, and then you start realizing they're driving in like the whole opposite direction. If you know Dubai. Took me a while to realize yeah. that. They'll take the longest route, the hardest route. They'll get themselves stuck in traffic just so that pay meter goes up. And then they'll take you to Festival City Mall, which is actually okay, because I, I love that mall, but <laughs> it's definitely not Burj Khalifa. So, yeah, that's that's one thing you have to be careful for. And like Michael mentioned, it's just so much easier to Uber everywhere. Yeah, they have I, a I, GPS, and they get raided, so they don't want to get screwed. I think you exaggerated a little bit with oh, Burj yeah. Khalifa, but yeah, like... I did. That the, 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 point, the point is there, like you ask them, do you know where's this location? Yes, sir. I know, I know. Oh, and and then, then they drive, they have no and idea. And they start calling their yep. brother and they're like, I don't know where it is. And you're sitting in the back and you're like, you told me no. Yeah. What? Get me out. Get me out of this cab. Oh, yeah. There were so many times where I was going somewhere and then he got lost and I'm like, just take me home. And I missed the outing, like the evening. Yeah. Oh, it was so annoying. And like all of them have uh, smartphones, right? But they don't use GPS. Yeah. I think I know the reason. It's going to be one of our Wait, next they topics. Didn't, they didn't have smartphones when I first moved there. They had these like Nokia oh, phones. Okay. And they'd call their brothers on that. Yeah. And ask for the directions. Well, that, that might be a work phone, but... Personal phone, they usually have oh, smartphones. Yeah, true. For sure they do. Yeah. And that, that will be one of our next points. Maybe the reason why they don't use it. Michael would like to cover mobile services. <laughs> He's uh, well, experienced I, in that yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> I have more experience than you. So, yeah. You, uh, so, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, so there are like three mobile providers in Dubai, I believe. Do Etisalat and, and Virgin. Virgin, yes. Yes. Oh, they all belong to the same owner, so there's really no difference. And do you find out even the, the services they provide? Like it's same, same. The reason why you should be careful about it is they usually charge more data than you actually use that says when you're using uh, prepaid cards so they will charge you more data if you're using mobile plans like the, they call it postpaid i believe uh they charge you whatever they want you try to call them deal with it no they will never refund you like it's impossible to deal with them I remember I had a plan with some free international minutes. Uh, I believe it was 50 international minutes. I used it for the first time. They charged me like I don't have those minutes. And I never saw this money back. So yeah, be, be careful about the mobile providers. Because whatever they charge you, you have to pay. You have no rights. You're not going to get money back. Like you can't negotiate. Yeah, you yeah. not even negotiate. It's like you can't protect yourself against mm -hmm. them. So what Natalia did, she never had a phone. Plan. I kept seeing on the Facebook groups like, oh, you have to email consumer rights. But that's it yeah, like that. There's some uh, department or governmental department in Dubai. It's called consumer consumer rights. 
but it doesn't really work, especially not for mobile services, banks, and all of that. It helps you in stores like Nike, Adidas, like uh, Dubai Mall, everything you can buy, but if it's a service, no way, it's not gonna help you. So yeah, as I said, like the best way so is yeah, probably no. what Natalia did, she never had a mobile plan, she always had a prepaid, and there's Wi-Fi everywhere. If I needed so. it, I had prepaid, but I always yeah. had Wi-Fi. Yeah. And if I didn't, then I didn't. <laughs> so so it's better to just use the Wi-Fi. Yeah, I think so. I survived somehow. It made me kind of yeah. antisocial, but yeah. yeah. I had to do what I had to do. I did not want the headache. I did not want the stress. I didn't want that constant anger that they that grows in you when you have to do like the basic essential needs of survival out there. I just I'm like one less thing to stress about. Yeah. So that was my mantra. <laughs> and then I merged off of him. I love it. <laughs> Only when I called him <laughs> sick. Love you. <laughs> Our next topic will be banks. It's uh, a big one. Yeah, I'll, I'll share my experience. This was right on the day when we resigned. I had to go pick wait, up wait, wait. my... I think you should go make yourself some popcorn because we have a lot of stories <laughs> and you won't believe what happened. Yeah. Like, so if you need a break, just go, pause the video spot. and then again. <laughs> and then come back. Yeah. But... No coke. Is he cancer? <laughs> but yeah, it's such a contrast to TD Bank. Oh my lord! I came here and I was like, I, I didn't even know how to handle the kindness. It was like so shocking to my system. I was like, I, I, I don't know how to function right now. How to reply? Yeah, there in their bank. It was in our uh, company building. I went to, uh, I guess, cash my last check. Yeah. The deposit and the one woman first you have to get a number and then the woman calls your number you go tell her what the case is and then she'll tell you what number to go and get so you go back to that machine where you got your original waiting number and get your second number and then you go to the lady with this specific number that you had to get and then she tells you okay you have to get another number because she did one part of this transaction and the second part, someone else had to handle. So you go back to this bloody machine and get that token to go see the third lady. Like, there wasn't just one person who can handle everything. So you're going back and forth from, forth from the counter. And then I went to one counter and there was something missing that I had to sign or something. So she's like, please go sign it and then come back. And I came back to the counter after just quickly signing it or something. I don't remember. And she's like, no, you have to go get a number. I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to leave. Like, if I have to get one more number, I'm going to go crazy. So that was my beautiful experience. And she was so rude the whole time. Like, each one. Yeah. That kind of summarized the customer service in Dubai. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Your situation? Well, All right. Take it away. I have kind of more specific situations regarding the banks so when i moved in dubai uh, they offered less, like uh, different selection of banks i would say really they yeah, were signing like, up with the we, first we one had, we had you... a representative and we were supposed to choose who we want to go I with. Went with i don't even think i chose a bank i, I went with the flow up. as well yeah yeah so I read through the benefits a little bit and there was... Just went with NBD. Yeah, one, <laughs> one of the benefits was international transfer like without a fee, right? So if I want to send something to my mom, dad, family, friends, whatever, I can. Republic, not in yeah, be back in Czech Republic, I can send the money and I won't pay anything for it. So like a month later, I was sending uh, something to my friend. And he received like 70% of the money I sent him. And the rest was fees for the transfer. Like, how is it possible? I sent international transfer, which was supposed to be free. No, it wasn't. Yeah, there was always some um, little writing 
Yeah. Fine writing, but there was never fine yeah. writing indicated for the public eye to read. It was just on their part. Yeah. Whatever they felt. So, like. yeah, you're right. That was one of the reasons I decided to change my bank. <gasps> so I went to the different bank. Which was a headache. Yeah, it, it was a headache just to change the bank because I... To my original bank, I gave them some uh, salary, whatever letter, and then I couldn't change my banks. Like Emirates wasn't able to send me a money or salary to my new bank because the other one received some letter. Like I didn't have any obligations there, like no debt, nothing, but they weren't able to transfer it to the new bank. In the end, I handled it somehow. You closed that bank account as well, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and but that was a headache as well. That was a headache. Because you needed to sign some paper, it had to get approved by the other bank, right? Yeah. And then well, it, they well, just wouldn't close. I don't remember the, the whole I still, I process. I think I still like, have a bank there, to be honest. I don't know. Or no, no, I don't. I closed it. Anyway, I still get the newsletters from them. Whatever. Uh, yeah, so I went with the new bank. I was so excited, like, okay, finally everything's gonna be okay. Two years later, I was waiting for refund. For, I don't know, what was that? Contact lenses I never received, something like that. So in Dubai, if you oh, ask for a refund... Oh, about mailing. When... Mailing? Yeah, but there's so many traumatic stories that people had their stuff delivered damaged and they mm. couldn't refund it. But it's a Emirates thing. Because they mail it to the building. If you go with UPS, it's okay. Well, that's another point. But okay. Well, so before I was so rudely interrupted... <laughs> so yeah, This if, is if my you're... show, I can kick you off <laughs> any second I want, okay? <laughs> If you ask for a refund in Dubai, it's not like this. It takes like a week to 10 days. So I was due some payment uh, on my debit card, I believe. But my bank already had the money from the refund. They just didn't allow me to use them yet. So the payment I was supposed to do went to overdraft I believe so I got charged for my balance being in minus even though bank already had the money from the refund so I got charged and next day I dis I received the refund and I never received the money for the fee that I wasn't supposed to be charged because they had my money so that was another example all over again. I, just... I don't know if it makes any sense it but... does it does yeah so they pretty much withhold my money, made my account to go to minus, charge me fee, and then they release my money. So it's like, I didn't have money thanks to you, and you charged me for not having your money. Yeah, it was so unnecessary, but it was just their little yeah. hack so to make money off of you. Of course, I tried to call, I tried to mail, three months, nothing happened. Mm -hmm. So... That's banking in Dubai. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have one more example. I heard that on board, so who knows how... How much truth there is behind it. How much it. truth there is, it is but I, I heard a lot of stories like that. So some people are, or some crew, are saving money. Good crew, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> very good. And, and they're good sending crew. me that home. So there was this girl, she had like, 100,000 dirhams, I believe, and she wanted to send it back home. They didn't allow they didn't allow her to send it all at once. They wanted to know the reason why she's oh, yeah, sending the money. they were so invasive about yeah. everything. Even going to the doctors, you go up to the reception, and she's like, what is the appointment for? I'm like, the wart on my foot. And now everybody knows. Thanks. Okay, so this girl was trying to send her money back to her family. They wanted to know the reason. They didn't allow her to send it all at once. So they told her, okay, you can send 50,000. And two weeks later, another 50,000. Of course, she didn't like it. 
So in the end, like the whole conversation, blah, 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 right? And the outcome of the conversation was the banker telling her, look, it's in our bank. You should be glad you will ever see this money. It's not yours. Yeah. It's in our bank. I remember that. That's and that, that's crazy to me. So they can do like this and you're broke because they decided. And it actually leads to another point. point we have. The last one and maybe the most important one, I would say. Mm -hmm. But before we go on to that final topic, I just want you guys to make sure you ask before buying a car how the whole licensing progress really is. A lot of my friends got like they were failed numerous times just so they keep paying. I'm talking about like seven plus times and it's a lot of money. And yeah, then, and sorry. No, go for as, it. as I said, they are amazing salesmen. So they will send you a can on the wheels for 30,000 dirhams just because they know how to do yeah, it. Yeah, they know how to sell. So be careful about this. Oh, yeah. So that's another thing that they can in research, investigate. Also, yeah, the mailing. Like, my friends scared me out of ordering anything. I didn't order anything until I started dating you, and you took charge of that. But yeah. I know someone who ordered these super expensive speakers because he, he had a hobby to DJ, and they arrived late, like nine months late and broken so he couldn't do anything about it and some people didn't even receive the things they ordered but oh yeah anyways. we ordered some rings and they end up in jamaica oh, never, yeah. never saw it again <laughs> but that was before dubai but we... no oh, that it, was while it, we were in dubai i know but did it arrive in dubai and no no yeah, it didn't so even that arrive didn't to, have dubai. to do with dubai but well it wasn't cleared by the customs so who knows so well, that's that um finally the last topic so the scary one. <laughs> the uh, awkward one <laughs> i believe you heard a lot about the local laws and like you can't hold hold hands hold hands you no, can't you, you kiss can. in public you can hold hands that's as you can as hold hands when you're married yeah you can't kiss on public unless you're married and it's just like like her face That's and it. yeah i have to have proof on me if they you know decide yep. to interrogate me yeah but i didn't care i i mean the first few months of living there i was like freaking turtlenecks and like social distancing but then i just didn't care anymore i'm like so... whatever i'm from canada my culture is to be free so respect yeah, where, where I'm trying to go with this is it's not that strict as they make it seem outside. But the thing is, if you have to deal... Can I, can I interrupt you? Yeah. I feel as though in the touristic parts, they're a little more lenient. But once you step outside of the tourist zones, that's when it's a lot more strict. Yeah. Well, I still think it depends who you're dealing with. So there was one important thing to realize. If you're dealing with someone who was born in Dubai, locals, right? Uh, they can do whatever they want. They can frame you, even if it's your fault, if they say You're something. guilty until proven yeah. innocent. Automatically well, guilty. Well, with them you're guilty. There's nothing like proven innocent. But then there's so many that shocked you and they were so freaking yeah. nice that yeah. I'm like, whoa. And they melt your heart and you're like, can you be my uncle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they can be nice, but still be careful because you never know who you're going to meet. Someone might be okay with us holding the hands, but the next person might not be. And we end up in a jail yeah. just because he's local. We're not. Yeah. They are kind of above the law. Oh, yeah. So never start a fight with them. No. Uh, That's the, a given. the same comes with police, military, customs. Like, they are above the law. It depends on their mood. If, they're, if they want to fine you, if they want to put you in jail, just be careful about that. Yeah. 
A majority of the policemen are Emiratis too. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's that's the rule. Yeah. Only yeah. I think ten percent can be um, expats, okay. but the rest are Emiratis. So. Yeah. Yeah, Emiratis alone. You gotta be careful dealing with them because they can just you know on a wave of a finger decide what they what your fate is. <laughs> I know I had a friend who moved to Japan and he was telling me that he was working for a company in Dubai for one year and then he just had to go. Like he's like, there's no culture there. Uh, and he did not like this experience. His employer uh, sent his colleague to jail because he thought he was stealing from him. And there was no, literally he just was like, that guy, that guy over there, the one eating the sandwich, yeah um he stole money from me and this guy like probably never even saw him in his life and was like what yeah. and yeah he had to go to jail and he couldn't defend himself and i am pretty sure he was released uh, the friend had mentioned that but it was just like guilty until that moment and they don't give him the benefit of the doubt no freedom to speak and i think there was something that um arose arised at the workplace that proved that this guy was innocent so it's not even that there was a case it was just something popped up at the uh workplace that kind of made this guy look innocent so yeah this friend of mine that i met through my cousin had told me and shared this situation i'm like yeah it's pretty much like that and i'm hearing it <laughs> yeah and you'll, you'll see examples if you're working for emirates by any chance on a flight so many times oh yeah they're like you know they have emirati password passport yeah michael so, has a specific example of his yeah. encounter with an emirati Police, so there, there was a police chief, Dubai Yo, police sleep chief. Sleep with your eye open tonight. Like <laughs> yeah. you, you can get assassinated for opening <laughs> your mouth about this. I, I don't know name. I'm scared. Of, I don't like, know names. The future of our future babies, right? Okay, now. so it, it was a fly to US. I don't remember destination. We had a police chief, chieftain, chief. Police chief on Lieutenant. board. No, chief. <laughs> and yeah, he was in a business class. He got drunk, I believe. Drunk, Muslim. I believe on ground already. Anyway, we took off and he started. So he boarded being... drunk? No, like he. No, in business class you can have champagne oh. and all of that on, on ground, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Anyway. <laughs> So during the flight, he started being a little bit aggressive. He hit like two crew, I believe. So usually when it happens on board, someone's aggressive and attack the crew. Were they girls? Uh, girl and two, guy. Yeah, I had two girls on my flight get punched out by a man. So yeah, if it happens, usually you restrain passenger. Because that's not acceptable. Like if it happens one, you might give a final warning. If it happens twice, you restrain. Anyway, this one was local, Emirati, police chief, so... Top dog of the chain. So yeah, speaking about the thing you should be the most careful about, or... Yeah, concern. Yeah. Concern about is dealing with locals. I was talking to my supervisor and he's like, yeah, we, we can't restrain him. Like, once we land to Dubai, if we restrain police chief, we we'll all go to the jail. Yeah, what? Because he's a sense? police chief. He's Emirati. There's no logic there. Yeah, and I was like so shocked because if it happened in Europe, I believe in America as yeah, well. Such a you know controversy yeah. all over the news. It like, would be that such cop, a that RCMP that we had or whatever he was here in Canada who ended up no. going to jail because he was like a murderer. Uh, Agnes was telling me about him. Anyway, it would be such a bad light on the police right such a bad publicity like the guy would be so ashamed to just show his face but in dubai he will send all of you to the jail you're done 
Like, it's just so crazy. Yes. And it ended up that our supervisor had to lay down with him on his business class seat, cuddle him Spoon. till the guy, the police chief, falls asleep. Like, he couldn't leave until he falls asleep. Well, even, like, making someone cuddle me, that's kind of, like, what? Emirati. Yeah. I don't know if we should share this story. I'm really scared. <gasps> Whatever. I guess I just won't tag the airline to the no, story. No, don't share this story. Not yet. I have to. The truth has to come out. We, we promised each other we'd tell what the truth. What if I get to shit for this? You won't. What will they do? You're in Canada. You're in free soil now. Okay. Calm down. You just want views. I just want You're just views. using me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it? Yeah, I guess that's all. So that concludes our video. Thank you for joining me this afternoon on this sunny... I stole the show, right? <laughs> sunny, beautiful Saturday. Uh, yeah, so hopefully this comes to use. Um... Oh, monkey wants it. Come here! <laughs> There she is, our beauty. Oh, yeah, our little Emirati. Oh, there <laughs> okay. she goes. She doesn't so... like her. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have a beard that can, you know, scruff her and scratch her. She's just using you for your beard. Oh, yeah, She's all she... about the beard. She loved me before the beard as well <laughs> in Dubai. <laughs> True, yeah, you have to shave all the time. Anyway, stay tuned for another vlog. Vlog number six. I won't tell you without me yeah not anymore Bye. that was enough i can't yeah. afford the goods this is all i can afford yeah <laughs> anyways anyway hit that subscribe button and follow her for more content <laughs> thanks right <gasps> sure thank you she, she didn't too. even pay me for that <laughs>